Hello, in preparation for our lab that was coming on Wednesday and Thursday, October 21st and 22nd, on chemical bonds, we're going to review a little bit about chemical bonds. This information you can use and put into your uh, the top part of the lab chemical bonds that you've either downloaded online or been given in class on Monday morning. Um, you can fill this top part in. This does not need to go into your lab notebooks. This does, though, is going to help you in getting the lab done and making good conclusions and using your data. So I do recommend you go ahead and fill this part out. Okay, if you recall, we talked. We haven't talked yet, depending on what day you ha are watching this, or maybe we have, about electronegativity. We did talk about the fact that electronegativity is the attraction of an electron to another nucleus. So when we're talking about the sodium and chlorine bond, sodium has one outer shell electron. He wants to get rid of that electron. When he gets rid of that electron, he'll have 11 protons, but only 10, ele oops, 10 electrons, so he'll have a plus one charge. Chlorine has seven electrons. He needs one more. When he adds one, he'll have 18 electrons, 17 protons, which gives him a negative charge. So, because chlorine has such a, such, such a strong attraction, it takes sodium's electron and adds it in. So we get a situation like this. Chlorine has eight electrons, one of those coming from sodium. Sodium does have, doesn't have any outer shell electrons and really has a full outer shell now because the next low, layer lower, the second level is now full. So we have that positive negative attraction. That's what an ionic bond is, is when they sh the sodium completely gives his electron away. So you have a huge electronegativity difference. For covalent bonds, the electronegativity difference isn't as much, so oxygen doesn't pull quite so hard on hydrogen's single electron. Hydrogen doesn't pull very hard on oxygen's single electron. So, the electrons are shared in that common space. Now, oxygen really does pull a little bit harder than hydrogen. So, oxygen gets that electron and has a slightly negative top charge. Hydrogen ends up with a slightly positive charge. But, for the covalent bond, basically what's happening is the electrons are sharing because the more electronegative one doesn't pull hard enough to get it on its own by itself. Okay, ionic compounds, they form because of the electrostatic attractions. They are metals and nonmetals. So when you look at a at your, um, an compound, if one of the compounds is on, I'm trying to do this in the, the camera, on the left-hand side of the periodic table, oops, I have one right here, I really did. The left side of the periodic table, over here to the left of the stair step line, that is an I, a metal. If it has the second one is to the right, that's a nonmetal. You can assume that that's ionic, because remember, as electronegativity as you go left to right, that electronegativity increases, and we can assume that that nonmetal is going to be much stronger than the metal at pulling on the electron. All right, because of this, it forms a crystal solid, a geometric pattern which looks like this. I'll pull that over. You get a crystal where you've got the negative uh, chlorines, the positive um, sodiums, and there's an attraction between that positive and negative piece. Right? You get strong attractions, strong intermolecular attractions. Here's a new vocab word. Intermolecular between molecules. Only it's not intermolecular here. In this case, it's interparticle between the ions or interion. It's a strong intercrystalline attraction. Um, ionic compounds are hard and brittle. They have high melting points and boiling points, so they're going to be solids and they uh, dissolve in water. And we talked about dissolving and dissociation. A sodium chloride actually breaks into sodium ions and chlorine ions, that is dissociation. So really I should say dissociate here. All right. Second type was covalent compounds, which was formed by sharing electrons. Nonmetals and nonmetals together. So when you look at your periodic table, 
You've got nonmetals over here and nonmetals. They're fairly close to each other. That means they're pulling more equally on the electrons, so they share instead of transferring. These form molecules. Molecules are complete sets of the uh, compound. You've got a, a two H's and one oxygen, and it's always going to be two H and one oxygen. Whereas sodium chloride is a one-to-one -one ratio, so you have you might have a thousand sodiums and a thousand chlorines bonded together in that crystal structure. You talk, we talk about sodium um, ions, we talk about their smallest ratio. With covalent compounds, we talk about molecules. Okay, these are weak intermolecular forces. They're often flexible or soft. They have low melting points, which means they melt easily. And they have low boiling points, which means they become gases easily. All right, so now please look back at the top piece of information on that lab, on the uh, lab. And notice, how do the electrons act in the bond? I just gave you that information, the difference between ionic and covalent. The types of elements that bond together, we just talked about that. The structure of the individual particles, the difference between a molecule and the ionic compound or the crystal lattice, and the attraction between the molecules. Is it a strong attraction? One is attracting the electron away from the other or, and holding together, and, or is it a weak attraction, in which case they have weak intermolecular forces. Okay, fill that out, and then you can watch the part on setting up the lab.